Greetings, my name is Dr. Robert Gish. I'm here today to talk about liver cancer. It's also called hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatoma. There are other rare types of liver cancer that I'm just gonna briefly touch on today. And if you have one of those rare types, please contact your provider for a detailed explanation. Let's start off by talking about where the liver is located under that right rib cage, largest organ in the body, complex, doing two to 300 functions every day. In the world, there are over 600,000 liver cancers every year. In the United States, more than 26,000 liver cancers. This is a major disease worldwide. And in some ethnic groups, like Vietnamese men, is the top cause of cancer death. So we have to diagnose liver disease, we have to stage liver disease, we have to talk about risk of liver cancer, then there's monitoring and surveillance that's really critical. We'll talk about all those today, but please see our other presentations on fatty liver, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and cirrhosis. There's more information pointing back towards this liver cancer theme and other audio video presentations in this group. Another picture of a normal liver, spleen location, and gallbladder, liver tests, elevated liver enzymes are a marker of liver disease. Abnormal function would say you have an even further increased risk of liver cancer. But again, that's on a case-by-case -case basis. The liver is a unique organ, dual blood supply, and we're gonna to switch to talking about these segments that are shown on these two cartoons in more detail in just a moment. A normal liver after a liver transplant, which may have been done for liver cancer. Segments of the liver, one, two, three, four, here in the left lobe, five, six, seven, eight, here in the right lobe, need to know the segments of the liver, need to know where a tumor is located, and then one can have a discussion about liver cancer, treatment, resection, transplant, whether it's invading blood vessels or not, whether it's metastatic or not, potentially to lymph nodes. Imaging really is our best friend for liver cancer assessment. Again, a normal liver has no tumors, smooth, brownish red in color. Normal liver cells. It's these liver cells or bile duct cells or blood vessel cells that turn into cancer when there's uncontrolled growth. Normal liver, blood vessels, liver cells. Inflammation is one of those pathways to liver cancer. Hepatitis is that word that means inflammation not necessarily infection or infectious or alcohol, but any cause of inflammation can result in cirrhosis or go to cancer directly. Fatty liver, a current and future common cause of liver cancer through inflammation, fibrosis, and cirrhosis. Inflammation again, scar tissue, risk of cancer. Cirrhosis, and look at these nodules. There could easily be a little liver cancer hidden in there someplace. You need to have a good pathologist. A part of the liver's been cut out. Transplant, imaging, all to help with that diagnosis. Another picture of cirrhosis with a lumpy, bumpy surface, or maybe a cancer lurking in here. Imaging, especially with CT or MR, is our best friend to make that diagnosis. Cirrhosis, those patients have the highest risk. 80 to 90% of patients with liver cancer have cirrhosis. But you can find cancer in even a normal liver. But again, that's less than 10%. Another 10% have some type of liver disease, but not true cirrhosis. Fibrosis, bridging fibrosis, early cirrhosis. Again, cirrhosis, portal vein, spleen, stomach. Patients with varices and suspected cirrhosis have
have a very high risk of cancer. So that endoscopy, where we might be looking for varices, helps us stage disease and discuss risk. We rarely do liver biopsies of liver cancer, although that's going to increase in the next few years because that biopsy will help guide therapy and prognosis. This is an ERCP where a patient has swallowed a tube, a tube's in the bile duct. We can look for gallbladder cancer and bile duct cancer. This is a separate type of cancer than hepatocellular carcinoma. PSC, which is discussed pretty extensively under our autoimmune presentation, increases the risk both for gallbladder, bile duct, and liver cancer. Here's a picture of a liver cancer after a surgical resection. Here's a CT scan with changes of a liver cancer. Managing liver cancer requires the interaction that's healthy between a surgical and medical team, oncology team. All of these interactions are taking place. Pathology with our oncology, hepatology, and surgical partners. Occasionally, our radiation oncology team. And of course, a cornerstone is our radiology partners using MR preferably, sometimes CT scan, occasionally ultrasound to make that diagnosis. We can treat cancer by heating up that cancer with radiofrequency ablation. A probe is put into the liver. Radiation through radio waves heats up the tumor and rarely, but can result in cure. We can put chemotherapy through a vein or artery out into the tumor with beads. Chemoembolization, we call this. Now we call it T-A-B-E because the beads are loaded with chemo. These are called drug-eluting beads that come in these special vials, special sizes with a specific amount of chemotherapy. Loaded beads are left into the tumor and the uh, cancer therapy, the chemotherapy, elutes and kills liver cells, specifically cancer cells, as can Y90 radiation beads to kill from the inside out. Another picture of those glass beads with radiation labeled on those glass beads. An angiogram to help plan putting in those glass beads. Another picture of glass beads being out in those tumors. You can even hit an entire lobe of the liver and have a radiation segmentectomy. One other thing that surgeons can do is come in and cut out these tumors as well, but it's important that the patient not have significant cirrhosis before surgery. Another picture of those glass beads, picture of planning an angiogram. Here we're gonna talk about transplant. Liver transplant has a cure rate of over 80% for liver cancer, provided that the tumor is single or up to three less than three centimeters in size. If you meet these criteria, the chance of cure is high, the chance of getting allocated an organ under the UNOS liver allocation system is substantial. We have a therapy, an oral therapy, only one for liver cancer. It's called serafinib. It binds to special tumor receptors blocks activation of some of the signals that are in the cancer cells telling them to grow and can block invasion, metastasis, block cancer growth, block blood supply. And it's been shown that through the use of this medication that we have better survival shown on this graph. This is a survival with placebo and black therapy in gray. This survival was so much better that the regulatory agents in the U.S. and Europe and the Asia-Pacific region stopped the, the trials because it was statistically so much higher, the survival was better, that this medication became approved through many countries in the world. This medicine does have a major side effect of rash called hand-foot syndrome. That can be managed by dose reduction, local care, there are other side effects that you must discuss with your provider if you're going to be started on serafinib. 
Finally, optimizing cancer management must take place through a multidisciplinary environment, interactions of pathology, oncology, surgery, hepatology or liver doctors, interventional radiology to come up with treatment decisions, a call and bring that patient in for treatment. Thank you very much for this presentation about liver cancer, malignant liver cancers. Please see our presentation on benign tumors for full closure on this discussion. Thank you very much.